Greetings and thanks for watching. In this episode seven, we are going to take these crusty old wing spars and use them as templates to make brand new ones in preparation for uh, building new wings. This whole process starts when you open up your checkbook and you pay for uh, this uh, very expensive and beautiful wood, uh, which is Sitka spruce. It's the nicest wood I've ever worked with. AC4313 requires that certified aircraft use a resource and all as a bonding agent. This stuff is mixed uh, by weight. Uh, you want to make sure that you have enough of this stuff so you can liberally coat both parts, both halves of your joint so you get squeezed out. Too much glue is much better than not enough glue because you want to avoid getting any kind of voids in your joint and the proof of that would be squeeze out uh, all the way around the part. Clamps, clamps, and more clamps. Resource and all likes uh, high clamp pressures. After the bond sets up overnight, it's always a real nail biter when you take the clamps off as to whether or not you got a good bond joint. And the standard, of course, is that you have squeeze out all the way around the parts. Determining the size and shapes of the spars was a combination of looking at the old Piper drawings, which were in very tough shape and kind of triangulating the information on those drawings against uh, what the real parts and making a determination of what, what the final sizing was. In the spirit of not uh, scrapping this lumber, what I did is I did a bunch of test holes with different types of drills. By the way, the best results I got for hole quality was a standard twist drill. I used the old spars as uh, templates to drill out the new spars. And also I used uh, the same spar to drill out both the left hand and right hand wing spars. But I did them separately as you can see. Certainly the most critical characteristic on these spars is the hole location because they have to match the steel fittings. So what I did was I made up some steel plugs, a 3 8 plug and a 5 16 plug. I used those plugs, depending on the hole size, to accurately position the part underneath the chuck of the drill press. I would lock the chuck. I would... Uh, go and clamp up the parts and then make sure that the part hadn't moved after clamping before drilling. Of course, the $64,000 question is, will this process yield the result that I want? Of course, the result that I want is to be able to bolt the fittings to the spars without having to chase the holes in the spars. And as it turns out, I was able to do that. Some people suggested that I use the fittings as the template uh, to drill the holes through the spars. But I just don't want to drill down through those fittings because those fittings, every time a drill touches them, the hole will enlarge. And the, those parts are not sacrificial. Well, the spars, unfortunately, are sacrificial. 
Naturally, there were other holes in the spars that uh, were not part of a critical hole pattern. Those holes uh, I drilled through uh, to the point where the tip of the drill just poked through the other side. Then I flipped the spar over and finished drilling it from the other side. That way I got nice, clean holes with no delaminations. Looks like all of that uh, tedious work that was done on the drill press did pay off in the end. Uh, I trial fit uh, each of the fittings to the spars, um, and I didn't have to chase any of the holes uh, for the uh, bolts. Uh, and the bolts were able to be driven with, um, with a rubber mallet. So I'm very pleased. Finally, before I put... Uh, finish on the spars, I went through and I marked all the locations of the wing ribs down the spars. So reassembly would be easier and faster. Uh, I used a polyfiber process, which is a two-part uh, epoxy varnish. Um, I got it in all the holes. Uh, I rollered it on. I did a um, one coat and I sanded between coats. And then I put a second coat on. And at the end of the second coat, I ran out of material. Mm -hmm. 